page to number six, please. Words are getting a little far away from here. Number seven, we'll turn the page. If I can turn the page, there we go. The second tune, please. Four forty eight.
Thank you, Tony and Gary, and thank you for lifting up your voice this morning. And to our Heavenly Father, it's always a, a joy to hear the voices sing out. And we will get to share uh, today in uh, a part of that story. And uh, Lorenzo and Janelle will be a, a part of that story today as we share in their baptism and the confirmation of Lorenzo. And we look forward to their, uh, their commitment to their Heavenly Father this day. A couple of announcements this morning. First one is uh, Vacation Church School is July 31st to August 4th here at Parkview from 6 to 8.30 in the evening. Sandy Welcher is our director, and uh, there'll be a short meeting right after the service today, and Sandy will be gathering, where are we gathering, Sandy? Like right up here somewhere, so uh, just get with Sandy for a meeting regarding Vacation Church School right after the service today, and if you can help in any way with Vacation Church School, a visit with her, she would greatly appreciate your, your contribution of helping. Also, the uh, ladies of the congregation yesterday went on a little day trip up to Liberty and over to Richmond, and they enjoyed their time in fellowship and uh, as a reflected upon church history and, and as part of that story that we're a part of here today. Their next activity will be at July 8th. It'll be at Joy Coffee. They're on 40 Highway from 11 to 1230, and there will be a, a book club kind of gathering uh, going over the book uh, Emma Smith, the Elect Lady. So be mindful of that July 8th. The only other announcement this morning is that uh, my family and I will be gone for the next couple of weeks. won't be back until towards the end of the month. Uh, so if you need any assistance here in the congregation, I ask that you get with uh, Ted or Rex and uh, with any concerns or questions or maybe prayer requests, uh, they can make sure those all get taken care of. So just be mindful of that we will be gone for a couple of weeks here. Would you bow with me this morning? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this uh, Sabbath day and the opportunity we have to uh, witness uh, those uh, baptisms and confirmation this day, Father. It reminds us of that uh, day in which we uh, made that uh, commitment unto Thee and that covenant that uh, continues with us this day. So might you continue to bless us in our time of worship, <clears throat> that we might be drawn unto you, Father, that this day we might lift up our voice and praise you in adoration and thank you for the blessings of life. We pray for our brother Stephen as he would share those words unto us and that we might have our ears open to hear and we might be able to see and bear witness of you this day and all that we do. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Those that are here this morning and those that are online in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's good to see all those that are here and we pray that uh, the messages brought today and the things that will be testified to the dedication of the two young ones today to uh, take upon them the name of Jesus Christ and having a determination to serve him to the end uh, that their lives might be blessed in that and we might be Part of that blessing and living out the gospel and bearing witness and testimony and showing our love to them. The scripture reading that I have this morning, well, uh, just FYI too, um, Mariah obviously is not uh, playing this morning. She uh, deferred to her better half. Um, 
because she's uh, got a little bit of strep throat and may or may not be uh, in the full blown of it, but didn't want to come and, and, and share that with us. So there was no special music after the prelude, obviously the rest of it. Uh, the service should be um, go pretty much as printed and um, on the, the little bolt and I got a big one. Thanks, Stephen, for that. Um, the scripture reading I had this morning is from the Book of Mormon. It's from chapter, uh, it's from Book of Alma, uh, chapter 16, and I'll start with verse um, 216. This being the tent of this last sacrifice, the last sacrifice, of course, being the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, to bring about the bowels of mercy, which overpowereth justice, and bringeth about means unto men that they may have faith unto repentance. And thus mercy can satisfy the demands of justice and encircles them in the arms of safety, while he that exerciseth no faith unto repentance is exposed to the whole law, the demands of justice. Therefore, only unto him that has faith into repentance is brought about the great and eternal plan of redemption. Therefore, may God grant unto you, my brethren, that ye may begin to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye begin to call upon his holy name, that he would have mercy upon you. Yea, cry unto him for mercy for he is mighty to save. May God add his blessing to the reading of the scripture and the service prepared this day. We will turn now to hymn number 391 as our opening hymn, after which the invocation will be given by Deacon Gabriel Monroy. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for letting us all gather here today. I pray for Lorenzo and Janelle as they enter the waters and make a great covenant with you. 
I pray that we all might feel your spirit as we know it'll be present for this great miracle. It might be a reminder for us that have entered the covenant already of our promise to you that we might continue to nourish that. And it also might be a testimony to those that have not entered the covenant of your truth. We're so thankful for our freedom to be able to worship together. And we pray this day in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Although this uh, message is going to be directed towards Lorenzo and Janelle, I would like any children that are uh, able to listen, if they could just have their ears open. The number 231, do you guys know what that means? You know what that is, Lorenzo? That is the number of days that Lorenzo and Janelle and his sisters, Adelia and Elise, have been in our lives. Though uh, their story at this time is not one that uh, we need to reflect back on. But it's the love of Jesus Christ that uh, brought them into our lives. My family and I have had the blessing to have them in our life on many occasions. And it started 224 days ago. Elise had an accident. She had to go to the hospital. And so Lorenzo and Adelia came with us for a short period of time. And it has uh, it's been life-changing to many people. And so we give praise and honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. for bringing four precious children into our lives in a non-common situation. My first interaction with Lorenzo, actually my first time seeing Lorenzo, coincidentally, was the same day that our brother Stephen spoke. 231 days ago, and I find it uh, very interesting that he is going to speak today, but I don't know, I'm sure Stephen will remember this, I can't imagine him not, but I was standing in the back speaking with one of Stephen's friends who came and visited to listen to him, and I see Lorenzo kind of running around having a good time, running from Sharon. Sharon was simply trying to help Kim out. Pick him up, take him to the car. And if you didn't see me standing next to Stephen, he's, he's a big guy. He can lift a little bit of weight. So I said, Stephen, can you help Sharon out? So Stephen, in his large stature, picks him up and walks him out to Kim's car. That was the first time we had interaction with Lorenzo. Seven days later, he was having lunch at our dinner table, and I would have never guessed. But there's a reason for everything, right? Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? And I remember saying, Lorenzo, we're going to say the blessing over the food. 
And he told me, I'm not going to say a prayer. And he implied that he didn't appreciate that we were going to say a prayer over the food. But it's interesting how influences and how the Lord works in our lives. Fourteen days later, he was again at our dinner table. And the first thing that he said was, we need to say the prayer first. I knew right then and there that not only Lorenzo, but Janelle and Adelia and Elise are very impressionable. No matter what the situation, no matter how any of us are, are raised, if we open our hearts and we serve the Lord, he can work wonders in our lives. So Janelle and Lorenzo, baptism is an outward act of the promise to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your promise to serve him, to honor him, and to do everything that you can to keep his commandments all the days of your life. And I would like to uh, say something to our sister Kim. I can't fathom taking on that type of responsibility. I gradually, my wife and I gradually brought five kids into this world. But never once did we have four or five given right at one moment. And so I know that uh, life can be challenging. But we all make that commitment to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he won't forget that. There's a sacrifice that you have given because you love these children. And it weren't for you accepting that responsibility, they wouldn't be in our life. And we wouldn't be here today. But what I'm going to ask Lorenzo and Janelle, as I ask anyone that I've baptized in the past, right before we, you're baptized, I will ask you if you accept your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to accept means to take in. Right? It's to open your heart. And it's to do everything you can to serve him. But if I could give you two things, two pieces of advice, there are two words, and there's two scriptures that I'm going to relate to that. The first word is love. And out of Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. And the second thing is forgiveness. Out of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I have brothers. We all, most of us have siblings. There's always someone in our life that upsets us and frustrates us. But what I would encourage you to do is to be still. Is to do your very best to love. Because if Jesus didn't love us, he wouldn't have died for us. And it was his sacrifice for each of us so that we can have eternal life with him if we follow him and if we serve him and keep his commandments. Let's now turn to hymn number 224, Here at the Water's Edge, which um, if um, Ted and Ken and Lorenzo and Janelle Take your place to be ready to be baptized and come out. Him number.
Parka, to be baptized by Elder Pencock, the board. Lorenzo Cruz of Arca, having been commissioned to Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nell, too, by her happy face this morning, is so pleased to take upon her the name of Jesus Christ. And so now Janelle Lucille Herbaca will be baptized by Ted Cox, the four. Janelle Lucille Herbaca, having been commissioned to Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good morning. I feel like I must apologize for the bulletins that were printed. Last time I trust technology to do what I thought it was going to do. <clears throat> My wife and I, we went out and uh, to make sure that we're being good influence upon our son. We went out and got him his own little Bible. What I love about this Bible, when compared to the one I own, the amount of pictures in this thing is spectacular. There is none in mine. With that being said, the nighttime routine, Rochelle will bathe, chase, she will then take him to his room, put him in his PJs for the night. I go over, I pick him up, 
And on the way to the rocking chair where Rochelle will be at, we stop beneath the ceiling fan for him to swap the control knobs, whatever they're called. It makes a giant clinking sound, and he feels like he's the coolest person in the room. And then from there, we sit down and we read two stories. And the first one will come from his scriptures. And a few months ago, when following this pattern of routine, there was the title of God Calls Isaiah, and it comes from Isaiah 6. And around this time, Ken had reached out to me saying, uh, I would like for you to be available on June 11th. And looking at my calendar, seeing nothing there, I had no excuse but to say I would be available. But as soon as I said yes, I got excited. I was going to be able to speak again. I didn't mess up last time. And so from there, it's interesting on how God works. As soon as I read this passage, that still small voice said to me, start here. So rather than reading from my son's Bible, which, again, the pictures are amazing, we'll go from, in chapter 6, Isaiah, let's do 1 through 8. And in the year that King Isaiah, or Azua had died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the, hit the temple. Above it stood the Sephirim. One had six wings, with the twain he covered his face, and with the twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his joy. And the post of the door moved at the voice he, of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And then I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the Sephirim flew unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongues of the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and lo, this had touched thine lips, and thine iniquities is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. I'm not going to lie, when I read this, no light bulbs really came off. I just read the passage for what it was, and that still small voice said, start here. And it wasn't until about 40 minutes ago, I'm sitting in the back, and the question hits me, what's a sephirim? A quick Google search would tell me that an angelic being. So if when we're reading this and there is that confusion of what is simply that, think of an angel. Here in a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating the 4th of July. Almost a lifetime ago, around the age of when I was baptized, there was a little boy that attended this congregation by the name of Rory. He and his family lived not even a quarter mile that way. Rory had a swimming pool at his house. He had a Nintendo 64. He was living the life, people. I didn't have either one of those things, but I was living a life. And anyways, it would be very common for me to turn to Rory and say, hey, tell your mom to ask my mom if it's okay for me to come over to your house after church. And through this friendship, not really reciprocated on my end to ask him to come to my house. I mean, we were invited over for a 4th of July party. Oh, what a party. 
I didn't swim with goggles. I remember the chlorine corroding my eyes and I couldn't see. There was laughter, there was fun, there was just the ambiance of what we would visualize a 4th of July to be. My parents, when raising six boys, after a while, their words just get hit a hard head. We don't, we don't hear for some reason. And I remember my parents saying, now, Stephen, if you're going to go play with fireworks, wear shoes. Wear shoes. My selective hearing was not engaged in that moment in time, failing to hear the wisdom of my parents. I was handled a sparkler. You know, the ones that you could write with cursive and you see the smoke for five seconds, you're like, hey, I wrote that. When the ash falls off and hits the ground, then met upon by barefoot. Pause. So when the Sephron takes the hot coal and places it upon Isaiah's lips, I instantly think back to the discomfort I felt for five seconds or five days. For you see, the, the area that my foot stepped upon that coal was the ball of my foot where all the yes ouch where all the weight of my body would then meet step after step a lesson i would learn every step i took maybe i should have worn shoes but you see the skin of the bottom of your foot is thick my lips if i'm next to a fire if i'm outside too long and i didn't drink enough water I become very dry, kind of like I am right now. Now imagine a hot coal going up against it. And from there, you're no longer unclean. What I appreciate from Isaiah's point of view, being a prophet of the church, he even felt the extreme unworthiness to be in God's presence. And then from there, being washed clean, so to speak, by that uncleanliness taken away, the iniquity gone, thy sin purged. And then the question of simply, who will I send? Who will go for us? He had two choices, so to speak. Stand there, don't do anything, or answer the call. I have another story for you of my past. Back when I was living at my parents' house in high school, I was told I was not allowed to, uh, I wasn't allowed to date. They didn't want me to have that distraction. They didn't say, however, I wasn't allowed to be looked at, so... Finding that lewd pole, I became a lifeguard when I was in high school. In that moment of very one-minded dimensional thinking, I didn't think about any major repercussions of what it would be to be a lifeguard. That in that moment, parents are trusting me with their children's lives for accidents can occur. Before I continue on, I would like us all to have some equal ground of what I'm about to talk about. In lifeguarding, we're going to talk about three main different types of scenarios that could take place. A responsive stave, when the individual's in the water, beginning to go beget the, the water line just ever so slightly. Unresponsive save, when the individual is now fully submerged underneath and is not responding to anything. You don't see their limbs moving, nothing. The third one, is head trauma, where injury has potentially occurred to the head, neck, upper back region. This story takes place in the middle of July. It was hot out. Tempers were flaring and whatnot. And it seemed during my four-hour shift, everyone was getting a save. Now, it's the responsive type. The individual is just beginning to go below the water. And from that, everyone was getting praise from the management team that was running that shift. 
Brothers and sisters, one thing you must know about me is I thrive upon praise from those that oversee me. Don't be laughing and you don't know where the story's going. So, I find myself on the rotation where I'm about to enter into the catch pool where three slides converge into this one pool. It is my responsibility to communicate to the lifeguard at the top of the slides on when the slide is clear and they may send the next patron down. As I'm entering into the pool, I remember vividly saying the phrase out loud, would it kill you to give me a save? Didn't specify people. In my head, I naturally thought, help, help, save me. Okay. At that point in time, the lifeguard that was leaving the pool had just cleared one of the slides. So I signaled up to the guard, send the next person down. At that point in time, no sooner than my hand come down by my side, did I see a little kid with this wall wave behind him inching towards me. At that point in time, I also saw one kid take what I would describe as a running head start down the slide to achieve maximum velocity down the slide. This little kid, he was boy through and through. He had a need for speed, and he was going to achieve it that day. No sooner did the little kid at the bottom of the slide did his feet touch the water. Did the feet of the kid on the slide meet his upper back, head, neck region. For you see, the, the whole purpose of this story is the fact that my will got the best of me. What I wanted in that moment was praise for my bosses that I was doing a good job. Little did you know I was threatened to lose my job due to the negligence that I worked under. You could say, for certain, Isaiah and I are not the same people. Now, was I doing the Lord's work in that moment? No. But does it set a pattern of history, though, that could potentially occur to where I could not do the Lord's work? Perhaps. I've attended this church since I was born. And from this exact pulpit, I've heard there is a calling that we must answer. That someday, we don't know the time, the hour, we will answer that call. Isaiah was given a similar circumstance and answered the call as we all should. Here am I. Send me. I just asked Tony to play some meditative music until um, Lorenzo's sister Janelle is able to get back up here as she continues to get dressed and ready.
gift of the Holy Ghost bestowed upon you, and may you all be blessed today. Let's pray out before us, please, Father. Lorenzo Cruz Morocco will now be confirmed by High Priest Jimmy Russ. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we are most thankful that we could uh, be gathered here on this beautiful Sabbath day. A day, Father, when uh, once again your children have uh, made that commitment unto thee. And any time, Father, that your uh, little ones, who we were all children unto thee, make that covenant in the waters of baptism, we know, Father, that uh, the angels in heaven rejoice. And so it is this day that they would rejoice. And they lift up their voice with us, Father, in praise and adoration. And as my brother Ted and I would place our hands upon Lorenzo's head, we know that he has entered into the waters of baptism. And we know now, Father, that he desires to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of fire. And so it is, we would say unto Lorenzo this day, receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that is there as an abiding comforter, that is there to bring peace, is there to enlighten your heart and your mind and your soul. There, whenever you would call upon it, it is there for you, Lorenzo. And being a part now, we confirm you a member into the body of Christ, known among men as the community of Christ here in the latter days. And where you are now a part, where you come and worship, that you feel the presence, and we're thankful that you have been brought into our presence, that you have brought us excitement and joy and laughter. And we pray as you continue your journey of life that you will ever be mindful of this day, of this covenant that you have made, that you will receive whenever you call upon. So Lorenzo, not only do the angels rejoice this day, but your new brothers and sisters in Christ rejoice with you. And we celebrate this day of great joy. And might you remember it, and that your journey in this life you might feel free, that you might feel comforted, and there would ever be presence around you of peace. This is my prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for him that as you have witnessed his desire to be baptized and be confirmed and to look and be presented a new member of the church that that will last all the days of his life. Let us now turn to him number 379, Take My Life and Let It Be, after which will be a de uh, benediction by Elder Doug Brock, after which will be a hymn 552, praise God.
Father, we, uh, we come at this time to thank you for your great mercy in our lives. We have witnessed the holy ordinances of your covenant with mankind that uh, you established before the foundation of the earth. That you would bring all things back into your presence. And were it not for your uh, mercy unto us to communicate this, to Adam and Eve, to Enoch, to Abraham, to Isaiah. to Joseph Smith, to your servants throughout the ages and those who had responded to you, we would be lost. And so we thank you for your mercy and for uh, being reminded once again as we witness these ordinances in Janelle and Lorenzo's lives that you would uh, continue with us in the days to come, that we would not think more highly of ourselves than we ought, but that we would remember that it is you within us that work your good works and that take the gifts and talents you have given us and multiply them. And while we use these to... uh, Maybe earn a living to do things in the world, yet we know that there is a deeper purpose in you and that you have uh, reached into humanity and paid the price for us and our Lord Jesus in a way that we could not. And that you have established a marvelous work and a wonder And there is hope within us, hope uh, in this age in which uh, there is darkness that there was in the days of Isaiah. But as you showed Isaiah the bright hope of Christ, so that bright hope burns within us through that Holy Spirit of promise, that fire from heaven which is the love of our Lord Jesus. And so help us walk that that which we have witnessed and heard this day would be consecrated for our good for the days to come. And these things we pray in the name of our Savior who is ever with us, even Emmanuel. Amen.